Hi ladies, so you guys know that the live had messed up on Wednesday when we were trying to do our two hour session and then it got split into four parts but for some reason part one is missing and that's like a whole good hour of stuff missing so um, I was going to do a sit down kind of talk but what I'm going to do is flip the camera around so you guys can actually see my notes um, and I'm going to talk you through how I did the notes because I don't know where the second portion um, I mean sorry not this yeah I don't know where the second part of the video started for the live so I'm just literally gonna walk you through all 22 verses um, showing you guys my notes so that way we can get through this and um, that way it'll be up for you guys I'm sorry that this is pre-recorded but um, it has to be pre-recorded so I'm gonna try to edit this all in one day and upload it um, but yeah I'm gonna flip the camera around now and show you guys my notes Okay guys, so we're going to jump straight into this and I'm going to walk you through all the notes that I took because um, doing the talk through, like I said, probably would have been a little strange to do. So, it says, now in the days of a hazardous. I underlined now in the days of a hazardous and I put a line here, an arrow rather, saying that he inherited the Persian Empire from his father Darius. And then I gave cross references, which were Ezra 4.6, which I'm going to read to you guys. And 4, 6, sorry, that's 5. I don't want chapter 5. <laughs> so Ezra 4 and 6 says, And in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, they wrote an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. And then I also give you Daniel 9 and 1. Which reads, In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, is what I wrote. And then when I circled a hazardous, I basically put that it's a Hebrew name, meaning mighty man, king, or chief. I know that he's the king of the Persian Empire, and he's mainly known by his Greek name, which is Xerxes. The Ahasuerus who reigned from India to Ethiopia over 127 provinces. I underlined that portion because I felt like that was important. It's letting me know that he has 127 regions and districts that create his Persian Empire. But verse 2, in those days when the king... Uh, when King Ahasuerus sat on his royal throne in Susa, the citadel. So, I wrote that Darius, who is Ahasuerus' father, chose Susa, or in some Bibles it will say Shushan, it's the same place, to be, political, to be the political and administrative capital which Ahasuerus inherited. I circled Susa, and I wrote that it's the royal city and the capital of the Persian Empire. Moving on to verse 3, it says, In the year of his reign, he gave a feast for all his officials and servants. So this was basically him showboating. And I'm going to show you guys my notes. For verse 3 here, it says the king is showing off his wealth and riches. Pretty much what he was doing. The army of Persia and Media and the nobles and the governors of the provinces were before him. I circled Persia and Media and drew an arrow here that says today's time. This is Iran. Because I like to compare what the map from back then looks like to what it is now. So that's why I wrote that. Verse 4, it says, while he showed the riches of his glory and splendor and pomp of his greatness. So, just give me one second. I'm trying to flip to the cross-reference now. But um, I circled pomp, and pomp basically is ceremony and splendid display at a public event. And then I wrote that the king is a world... Yeah, right? Okay. No? Yes. Okay, sorry. I'm making sure I'm going to write... Um, note but the king is a worldly man all about worldly riches and wealth and not heavenly ones I have a cross reference here to Deuteronomy 8 and 18 which reads you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get to get wealth that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day so here we have this king who's having this feast and he's just flaunting everything I mean everything to people and it's just like he's bragging about what he has but he doesn't realize he only has it because God allowed him to have it so that's why I wrote that and then for verse 5 it says and when these days were completed the king gave for all people in present in Susa the citadel both great and small a feast and for that I have my note which says this is a second feast to flaunt and be prideful the king is impressing them with great display of his wealth power majesty generosity and then I have a cross-reference to Matthew 20 and 25, 
because um, for some reason back then this was normal for kings to do it was it was normal for them to flaunt what they had and how generous they were and how powerful they were and even Jesus said so so Matthew 20 25 said but Jesus called them to him and said you know that the rulers of the Gentiles Lord lorded over them and their great ones exercise authority over them so kings and officials and princes had no problem um, you know parading their wealth they had no po problem um, pushing their authority they had no problem doing it that was really normal for them so that's why I put that cross reference so now we're going on to six and for verse six this basically talks about all the marvelous wonderful things that he had so he had white cotton curtains violet hangings um, fine linen and purple to silver rods he had marble pillars couches of gold and silver on mosaic pavements of porphyry marble mother of pearl and precious stones so I did define porphyry and I'm probably butchering the way you say that but hey and for that it is a rock consisting of feldspar crystals embedded in compact in a compact dark red or purple ground mass and for my notes what I put was this shows off his wealth by using fine linen and materials. Because, I mean, you have white cotton, violet hangings, you have fine linen, purple to silver rods, marble pillars, couches of gold and silver, mosaic pavements, you have marble, you have mother of pearl and precious stones. So then we go to verse 7, which says, Drinks were served in golden vessels and vessels of different kinds, and the royal wine was lavished according to the bounty of the king. Verse 8, I bracketed, which is... And drinking was according to this edict, there is no compulsion. For the king had given orders to all the staff of his place to do as each man desired. So I do have a cross-reference to that. But um, for that, all that I wrote was these men were pleasure seekers. They weren't drinking for the taste. They were drinking to get drunk. And the cross-reference I have is Proverbs 21:17. And that reads, whoever loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. So these men, again, were not drinking just for the taste. They were drinking for the pleasure of it to get drunk. And because they loved that wine so much, that wine was basically an inhibitor to the evil, wicked ways that could come about man. So that's what I put. Then verse 9, we get into the queen. So Queen Vashti also gave a feast for the women in the palace that belong so this is a third feast that's being held and is also showcasing fellowship between the king and the queen as well as the people of the Persian Empire I'm gonna read Luke 10 and 7 to you guys and it reads and remain in the same house eating and drinking what they provide for the laborer deserves his wages do not go from house to house so it's basically saying that they didn't these women didn't have to leave the palace they didn't have to go to a separate household they all because I know back then um, a lot of the times the men and women had separate areas um, but in this case it says that she stayed in the palace that belonged to King Ahasuerus so she held a feast for the women that's letting me know that the women got together alongside with the men but they also got with themselves they had conversations and stuff like that and then it's also letting me know that they were able to um, all sit together without any type of craziness I did circle Vashti and her name is Vashti um, and it's the Persian name meaning a beautiful woman so that's what I put as the definition so moving on to verse 10 okay just looking at my notes to make sure So I'm going to pop this up here. I just have it sitting on top of my um, <laughs> concordance because it's so huge. But um, so moving on to verse 10. On the seventh day when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehumet, Mehumen, Bista, Harbona, Bixa, Abaxa, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven eunuchs who served in the presence of the king Ahasuerus. So what I put for um, ten, verse 10 is I circled the word Mary. I still have yet to go back in my notes and define that. So that's something that I want to define. So I would say define that. But um, I underlined when the heart of the king was married with wine. This is letting me know that he drank until he was drunk. Um, and then I circled the word eunuchs. And I needed to know what that meant. So I know that it's an officer or an official. So I put that definition here. So moving on to verse 11. 
It says, to bring Queen Vashti before the king with her royal crown in order to show the peoples and the princess her beauty, for she was lovely to look at. Verse 12 says, but Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command delivered by the eunuchs. At this, king, at this, the king became enraged and his anger burned within him. So for verse 11, I underline the whole thing because it's important to me. And my note for that says, Vashti was a beautiful woman. We clearly know that because the king is saying that, um, you know, she was lovely to look at. Okay. The king wanted to parade her around as a trophy wife with no regard to her feelings. He wanted her to look best fitting her position as queen is what I wrote. And you guys will see that note in the um, printable if you guys downloaded it. If not, definitely download the notes because I have these notes there. Um, so that's basically what I put for that. So for verse 12, I underlined Queen Vashti refused to come. And then I underlined in brown, the king became enraged and his anger burned within him. So for the first part where it says Queen Vashti refused to come, I said as a wife, though not a follower of God, she refused her husband. She should have obeyed, but now chanced him being upset and losing her position as queen. So then I have some cross references, which are Ephesians 5, 22 and 23. And I'll turn to that and read it real quick to you guys. 5, 22, and 3. And that reads, Wives, submit to your husband as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. So she now has disrespected the head of her husband by disobeying his command to come to her. Um, and then I have 1 Timothy 2 verses 9 through 15 but I'm going to focus really on verses 11 through 12 so I'm going to flip to 1st Timothy chapter 2 and I'm going to skip straight immediately to 11 and 12 which reads let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man rather she is to remain quiet so again this is something Vashti just did not do she very much decided she wasn't going to obey her husband she wasn't submissive to him in this instant now I'm not saying she was never submissive we don't know the full story concerning Vashti unfortunately um, which is a plus and a negative because I feel like we should know more about her to understand her story but at the end of the day even though um, this makes no mention of God Chapter 1 is all about God, and I'll get into that towards the end when I'm done. But um, that is that. And then we're going to go to 1 Samuel 15 and 22. And this is all about obedience. So 1 Samuel 15, 22. And it says, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. She didn't obey her husband, so she, sac she basically was sacrificing her position as queen. And then for the second portion that I put in um, brown, which is the king became enraged and his anger burned within him. Um, right here, I put that Vashti's refusal hurt his pride and, and it embarrassed him because he did this in front of all the princes. So he had all these people there. He was expecting his wife to come so he could show her off. And she completely told him no, like. She said no, so that hurt his pride and it embarrassed him. And he then allowed his anger to blind him. So I have three cross references, which are Psalms 37 and 8. So I'm going to flip to that 37 and 8, which reads, Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. So him allowing his anger to just seep within him is now allowing him to um, do evil things and leave him is basically leaves himself susceptible to evil to happen which obviously did occur um, and then I also put Proverbs 14 17 and it says a man of quick temper acts foolishly and a man of evil devices a man of evil devices is hated and then I have 1632 so because he was so quick to get angry with his wife, he's a foolish man. So 1632 reads, Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So those were the cross-references that I gave. 
So, moving on, we have verse 13, which says, Then the king said to the wise men, Who knew the times? For this was the king's procedure toward all who were versed in law and judgment. So, I underlined, the king said to wise men, and I underlined, Who knew the times? I also went down to verse 15 and underlined, What is to be done to Queen Vashti? This part, the king said to the wise men, what is to be done with Vashti, I underlined in the same color. And then who knew the times, I underlined differently. Because who knew the times, basically this is referring to the wise men at this time that could determine the most opportune time for action by divination and astrology. These were basically, the, the wise men at this time were basically people who um, looked to the stars for the answers. Pretty dumb, um, but they did. And then, for the king said to the wise men, what is to be done to Queen Vashti? For 13 and 15, right here is my note. Um, I wrote, though he was king, he relied on officers or eunuchs or princes or whoever, um, even concerning his wife. The wise men were advisors, but they did not give godly wisdom. And then I have some cross-references. So the first one was Daniel 2 and 13. And these cross-references really just discuss, sorry if you guys hear all that stomping, um, my landlord kids are upstairs, so yeah. But uh, Daniel 2.13 reads, So the decree went out, and the wise men were about to be killed, and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. To kill them. So Daniel was basically seeking out these um, wise men to kill them because they were not really truly godly wise men. They were more of the worldly kind of wise men. There's also verse 27 in the same chapter. So 2 and 27 reads, where is it? Daniel answered the king and said, the wa No wise men, enchanters, magicians, or astrologers can show to the king the mystery that the king has asked. So again, these wise men use astrology, they use science, they use magic to get their answers, to, div to divine what's good and what's not. I also have Daniel 5.15. And it says, now the wise men, the enchanters, have been brought in before me to read this writing and make known to me its interpretations, but they cannot show the interpretation of the matter. So at this point, you now have these wise men, wise men which they refer to as enchanters, they're magicians basically, and they claim how they can interpret everything using the stars and magic. But there was something that they just could not interpret because they didn't have the power to, which reveals that these men are not godly. And then the last reference I have is Isaiah. Isaiah 47, 13. And again, all these cross-references are in the notes. Um, so 47, 13 says, You are wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and save you. Those who divide the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at the, at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. This is basically sounding just like um, a hazardous situation right now because he's going to these wise men who are enchanters. They look to astrology. They look to magic to, def to divine certain things and to tell the king what he wants to hear. Um, but they're not giving him sound counsel. They're giving him ridiculous things. So I just thought that was cool. So moving on to 16, as you can see here, I bracketed 16. Now on camera, this is where I was getting a little frustrated because you can see I was doing way too much. Yeah. So, um... I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get my uh, post-it note over here so that I can do this. Okay. So for verse 16, um, I basically bracketed the whole thing, and it reads, When Memukin said in the presence of the king and the officials, not only against the king has Queen Bashti done wrong, I circled the word wrong, but also against all the officials and all the peoples who are in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. So this is basically letting me know that the men immediately felt threatened by Vashti's action toward the king. Memukin gave evil counsel and not sound counsel. And then I made a reference to Psalms 1 and 1 because it talks about, um, you know, sitting in the counsel of people, the foolish. So it reads, Psalms 1 and 1, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the ways of sinners, nor sits in the seats of scoffers. 
obviously King Ahasuerus did all of this. He sat with wicked people. He got counsel from the wicked. He sat with sinners because I'm pretty sure these princes were sinners. And, um, you know, he sat with people who mocked God. That's just basically what was happening. So I put that there. And then for wrong, I looked it up and all that in Hebrew. So here it is. Wrong is Awa meaning to act perversely or sin and basically this is telling me that by Vashti the queen refusing the king um, she insulted and disrespected him as king and she was considered not just discourteous but subsur subversive as well so then moving on to 17 and 18 I bracketed 17 and 18 because there's so much in there about Queen Vashti and how she had influence on the women but I did circle the words heard and contempt So for her, I'll show you guys what I have. Her, the word is Shama in Hebrew, and it means to listen to, give heed to, or to obey. And contempt in Hebrew is Bizion, which comes from the word Baza, meaning to despise through pride. And then for verse 17, I had a lot. So I'm just going to quickly read verse 17 and 18 to you guys, and then tell you guys my notes. So... Verse 17 and 18 reads, For the queen's behavior will be known, to, will be made known to all women, causing them to look at their husbands with contempt. There goes that word. Since they will say, King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, and she did not come. This very day, the noble women of Persia and Media have heard of the queen's behavior, and will say to, and will say the same to the king's officials, and there will be contempt with wrath. I'm sorry, there will be contempt and wrath and plenty. So for 17 and 18, um, I have a lot of things. So I put that the men felt as if wives would be influenced to disobey and become their own leaders because Queen Vashti had influence on them. And then I also put that the women would act as Vashti did and their feelings might echo the spirit of her blatant refusal. Okay. So moving on to 19, it says, um, if it pleases the king, let a royal order go out from him and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, Medes, the people from Media. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn to pronounce this word so that it may not be repelled or repealed that Vashti is never again to come before King Ahasuerus and let the king give her royal position to another who is better than she. So that's verse 19, right? So I underlined that part, right? I'm just sitting that down so I can grab my notes for you. Verse 19, I wrote that the cost of Vashti's disobedience is her position and livelihood as queen of Persia, of the Persian Empire. Now, she may have been the most obedient wife ever, the most obedient queen ever. Maybe this is her first time, her one-time offense. But that one speck of disobedience cost her her livelihood. It cost her everything she knew. We don't know if she had family members. We don't know if she was able to stay in Persia or if they exiled her from Persia. We don't know what really took place but we do know that that one mistake her one refusal to obey cost her everything and that kind of reminds me of like how we as um people as, you know as we as humans we tend to disobey our parents once and um that one time disobedience can cost us a lot of trouble and it goes the same way with god when we disobey god that one time whether he's telling us not to do something or to go somewhere or to do something if we refuse to listen to him that one speck of disobedience can ruin us for a lifetime so i thought that was profound Moving on, sorry about the banging. <laughs> so moving on to verse 20. Um, so when the decree made by the king is proclaimed throughout all his kingdom, for it is vast, all women give honor to their husbands. All women will give honor to their husbands, high and low alike. So I have some cross references, obviously, because cross re cross cross references <laughs> really help to connect um, the word with the Old and New Testament. So I just turned the ringer off on the house phone for a minute so I could finish this. <laughs> but um, so the cross reference for that I'll read. But what I put is for verse 20. Um, I underlined all women will give honor to their husbands low and high alike. 
Um, I wrote that the purpose of this harsh punishment towards the queen is to use her as an example and to remind the Pers Persian women of their roles as wives. And then I have the cross references, which are 1 Corinthians 7 and 10, which reads, To be married, I give this charge, not I, but the Lord. The wife should not separate from her husband. So a wife should never separate from him. Then we're going to go to Ephesians 5.22 which obviously we all should know what that says wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord and then we're gonna go to Colossians 3 and 18 and that reads wives submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord so um, you know this is just them writing this decree is using the Queen as an example because I feel like if they use the queen, women will remember what their, their, you know, how much power they really have. They want the women to feel powerless. They want these women to bow down to them. But, um, I mean, these are not godly people. The, I'm not going to say all Persians are not godly because I don't know. But um, at this point in time, I don't believe they were godly people, according to the Bible. And, um, you know, they wanted their women to just bow down to them out of authority and power. And they wanted to exert that power. And... They were just taking advantage of the whole situation. So the last verse is verse 22. And I wrote, um, well, it says he sent letters to all the royal provinces, to every province in his own script and to every people in his own language, that every man be master in his household and speak according to the language of his people. So I underline in its own script and to every people in its own language. And basically, that's letting me know that there are multiple languages in Persia, because the Persian Empire has 127 regions. So what I put is that the Persian Empire had many languages, such as Old Persian, Babylonian dialect, Aramaic, Assyrian, Arabic, Indo-European, and Elamite. I think that's how you pronounce that one, Elamite. And then for the last portion, where it said... Um, that every man be master in his own household. I wrote that this was basically to reinforce that men were the leaders of the house and that women should obey. I wrote, see Genesis 3.16, and that basically says, I, to the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, and he shall rule over you. So again, this is them just reiterating that men should rule over women. And that's pretty much it. Okay, guys, so that's basically it. Um, but quickly, basically for chapter one, um, when I first read chapter one, I really didn't care for it. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand the importance of it. And there are some books um, and some chapters in the Bible where I won't understand it. And it'll annoy me because it's just like, what does it mean? But um, after looking at it from a godly standpoint, um, and what I mean by that is saying, after reading this through the eyes of God, um, or at least trying to read it through the eyes of God, I don't focus so much on Queen Vashti and the King uh, and King Ahasuerus because at first I was like, okay, the Queen, you know, she disobeyed him. What was the problem? I didn't get the prop like what was wrong with that. I know the Bible tells wives to you know submit and obey their husbands, but I didn't get the problem about that, especially because he wanted to parade her off in a sexual manner. Um, I didn't see what the issue was, but. When I look at this from a standpoint of this being a way that God opens up the door for Esther to come and fulfill his purpose, it makes sense. Um, he had to have the queen disobey or do something so that she could be removed from her position because he would not have been able to save his people if it wasn't for Esther. So this first chapter is really more so um, the beginning of him working in his providential hand over the people of um, Israel. It was, it was his way to protect his people, the Jews, during a time where strife was getting ready to happen because of Haman. And um, I don't know, I just think it's profound. I still have my mixed emotions. If you guys saw my comment um, under the, the photo, there's a photo and I'll post a picture here that um, talk, it basically says, let's discuss chapter one, a, a queen dethroned. And basically yeah, that's where you can post your comments and stuff like that. A few of you guys have commented. I'm going to answer those today and comment back with you guys and discuss it. But um, I even said there are points where I agree with her and points where I don't, because I feel like she should have submitted to her husband. But again, the Bible says to submit to your husband only because your husband should also be submitting to you as Jesus did to the church. So 
I mean, I don't know. I have mixed emotions about her disobeying her husband because, I mean, I wouldn't want to be paraded around. But not only as just a, as a wife, but as a queen, you have a duty to the king who is your husband and to the people of you. I don't know. My thoughts about that is all over the place. So if you guys have your own personal thoughts, you can leave them in that um, on that photo or even just in the comments down below. But um, hopefully this, this helped you guys um, looking at my notes and seeing it and walking you guys through it again. Definitely check out the word study that um, Angela did on the word beauty. I'll have that. It's actually in the files. If you click on the Esther files, it's the Esther word study file as well as all the links for the Esther study. Hers is split up into four parts. And I'm actually going to have a link to the YouTube channel as well that she has. Because she has a YouTube channel now, which is awesome. And she has the whole video connected as one. So I'll post that. So check that out. Um, download the packets of, obviously, the Esther introductory packet, which has the historical um, information. The live chapter one notes, as well as um, the packet with all the information as far as dates and questions um i did post a picture for the questions so you can answer those questions on the group um and also there's a verse mapping video coming i don't know when um it might be up today i don't know but angela is definitely going to be doing a verse mapping video on um esther 1 and 11 so look forward to that and i'm um, prayerfully next week um, Wednesday we can do the live study session without a hitch, without any problems, because the enemy has really been messing with me um, ever since Sunday, because I got an amazing word Sunday from my pastors. And um, it's stuff that I knew was taking place, um, because God spoke it to me in my own little Bible study section sessions and um, stuff like that. But the confirmation and the extra things that they were telling to me, telling me were just mind blowing. And um, I'm definitely thinking about doing my testimony video soon, videos, because I have a, a lot of testimonies to share with you guys. But um, I'll probably record one today. I probably won't upload it though for a while. But hopefully this video helped. To those of you who are new to our Daughter of Increase Bible Studies, what happened Wednesday does not ever happen. It normally never happens. So hopefully next week it'll go back to its regular way but um other than that that is it for this video and thank you to everyone who's joining the group joining the study participating thank you so much and i truly appreciate the kind comments and your prayers i really do and um yeah that's pretty much it for now so hopefully this makes up for the missing live video that's gone somewhere and um i'll see you guys later bye Okay guys, I'm back. Um, my phone was on 60% and it completely died on me. And then I switched over to the phone that I'm on now and that phone completely died. But then it came back on and when I tried to do the live three times, for some reason the camera screen was just black. So I don't know what's going on, but we're going to get through this study um, today. <laughs> so again, I apologize that the camera went off. I just switched phones over and um, hopefully this runs smoothly. Let me turn on my other light so we can have enough light going on. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to finish the study. I apologize to you who you guys who were watching the live earlier. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to just pray that this goes smoothly so that I can finish this. Um, so let me just put a notification that I'm back on live. Because this is crazy. <laughs> like my phone was really on 60% and just decided to turn off for some reason. But um, I basically left off just writing down the cross references for verse 12, the first portion. Back on live. Okay, so those are the cross-references for the first portion where it says Queen Vashti refused to come. So that's just that. Um, moving on to the last cross-reference for verse 12, which has to do with um, the king became enraged and his anger burned within him. I'm going to write V12 
again because it's the same verse, just a different portion. And um, so where it says the king became enraged, his his anger burned within him. His anger meant she would be in trouble, and it may have hurt his pride as well. He let his anger blind him, and it publicly embarrassed him. So, what I'm going to write is... Vashti's refusal... Hurt his pride... And embarrassed him he let his anger blind him and I do have three cross references Again, sorry guys, um, my phone was doing something stupid. It shut off. It was still on 60%. I switched over to this phone. This phone had shut off the minute I was getting ready to go live. When I put it back on, it came back on. And then I tried to go live three more times. And for some reason, the camera screen was just pitch black. So this is like the fourth or fifth time <laughs> I'm trying to, I was trying to get on live and it went through. So, I don't know if this is an enemy messing with me today, but um, we're going to get through this study, whether it's in two parts, three or four, we're going to complete this study. Um, and I have all the links, obviously, in the file for you guys, so no worries to those who can't find this part. But, um, yeah, so, as I was saying for verse 12, we did the first part where it says, Queen Vashti refused to come. I wrote, as a wife, though not a follower of God, she refused her husband. She should have obeyed, but now chanced him being upset and losing her position. And then I did the cross-references, which were Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 15, but in parentheses I put verse 11 and 12 because those were the verses I wanted to focus on. And then I also in this portion where it says the king became enraged. His thing burned within him. I'm writing that Vashi's refusal not only hurt his pride, but it embarrassed him. And he let his anger blind him. So the cross-references I have for that are Psalms 37, 8. Thirty-seven eight, which says, Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. Right? Then we have Proverbs 14 and 17. Fourteen and seventeen, which says, A man of quick temper acts foolishly, a man of evil devices of evil devices is hated. And then we have Proverbs sixteen. 32, which says, whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Hopefully this is working, you guys, because I don't know what's going on with my phones today. Ay, ay, ay. Let me go know if you guys are seeing because I don't know what's going on. So if you guys are seeing it's just type yes so that I know. Because my phone just did something real stupid and I don't know if it stopped or anything. So just let me know if you're seeing this. Hopefully you are. But um, I'm going to write. See Psalms 37.8. Proverbs fourteen seventeen and then sixteen thirty two. Okay, thanks, Stacy. So now we're gonna highlight um, for Unix. I'm going to 
do that in yellow. The king became enraged, will be in brown. Hopefully you guys cannot hear that noise in the background. Okay, we're almost done. Okay. So now we're going to read 13. No problem, Betty. It was it was me. Um my phone completely just shut off. <laughs> hey, Latoya. My phone had completely shut off at 60% and then I tried to come back on with this phone. It wouldn't work and then when it did turn on, the live stream just wasn't working the first three times that I attempted to do it. So, I don't know what's going on, but it wasn't you guys. It definitely was me um, and I didn't even realize it until after the fact. So, you guys, I'm going to just um, link the parts together in the file so you guys can check out part one and part two but we're gonna get through this even if it's gonna be four parts <laughs> so um okay so now we're gonna be reading 13 all the way to 22 is it 22 verses or 23 okay we're gonna read verses 13 straight to 22 where is my pen see now i can't find oh here it is okay so Starting at verse 13, if you guys want to see all the notes for verse 1 through 12, it's definitely in the first portion of the video. <laughs> but um, the second portion we're just going to read through. So it says, Then the king said to the wise men who knew the times, for this was the king's procedure toward all who were versed in law and judgment, the men next to him being Karshana, Shethar, Admatha, Admatha, Tarshish, Maris, Marcina, and Memukin, the seven princes of Persia and Media, who saw the king's face, and sat first in the kingdom, according to the law, what is to be done to Queen Vashti, because she has not performed the command of King Hazarus delivered by the eunuchs. Then Memukin said in the presence of the king and, his, and the officials, not only against the king has Queen Vashti done wrong, but also against all the officials and all the people who are in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. For the queen's behavior will be made in contempt, since they will say, King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, and she did not come. Verse 18, This very day the noble women of Persia and Media, who have heard of the queen's behavior, will say the same to all the king's officials, and there will be contempt and wrath and plenty if it pleases the king let a royal order go out from him and let it be written among the laws of the persians in midas medias i'm not good sure how to pronounce that word <laughs> but um so that it may not be re repelled that vashti is never again to come before king Iris. Let the king give her royal position to another who is better than she. Verse 20. So when the decree made by the king is proclaimed throughout all his kingdom, for it is vast, all women will give honor to their husbands, high and low alike. This advice pleased the king and the princes. No problem, so um, Tasha. 
this is part two because part one for some reason the clip the video just completely cut off so definitely check out part one later on and um, this is just part two finishing up but um in and the king did as Memu Ken proposed he sent letters to the royal provinces of every province in its own script and to every person in its own language that every man be master in his own household and speak according to the language of his people so there's nothing else that I want to so so obviously of course you guys would have circled whatever words you personally wanted to define but I don't have anything else to define that I wanted so um you know but I would circle wise men of course I think that's a good one to circle um, I would I would circle the names of these people and I think that's probably it what I would circle probably contempt and wrath as well as repelled but um repealed sorry but um okay so what I did underline in the first three verses are I underlined king said to the wise men and I also underlined um, in verse 15 what is to be done to Queen Vashti now the reason why I did that is because um, you know though he was the king of 127 promises he was the king of the whole entire Persian Empire he still relied on his officers to tell him how to handle his wife um, and the wise men were advisors but they never gave godly advice so I'm also gonna um, underline knew the times but that's gonna be a separate kind of comment so um, we're gonna start off with knew the times I guess since that's gonna be in a verse by itself so I'm gonna write that over here so I'm trying to make sure it's in frame without knocking my stuff over So, for um, the wise men, where it says knew, knew the times, I'm going to write the wise, in quotation marks, men, could determine the most opportune time this is so weird to write like this with this tripod in the way <laughs> So for new the times, I put the wise man. I put wise in quotation marks could determine the most opportune time for action by div divination and astrology. So they relied on a lot of astrology to um, sort of divine the right moment for things. And then for verse thirteen and fifteen together, which I'm going to put v thirteen and fifteen. I wrote that um, though he was king he relied on officers even concerning his wife Wise men were advisors.
that's good. Godly wisdom. Okay. So, for verse 13, where it says, Knew the times, I wrote, The wise men could determine the most opportune time for action by divination and astrology. And then for verse 13 and 15, in verse 13 it says, The king said to the wise men, and in verse 15 it says, What is to be done to Queen Vashti? I put that though he was a king, he relied on officers even concerning his wife. Wise men were advisors, but not giving godly advice. So um, I have cross-references for this. Now I have a cross-reference to Daniel 2 and 13. So Daniel 2.13, it says, So the decree went out, and the wise men were about to be killed, and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. So this is telling me that Daniel had to kill the wise men because they were not godly. So that just tells you that they definitely weren't godly. They did not give godly advice. So I'm going to write C. Daniel 2.13. Um, I've had some other cross references. I have Isaiah forty seven thirteen. And it says for Isaiah forty seven thirteen. You were wearied with your many counsels. Let them stand forth and save you. Those who defy the heavens, who gaze at the stars, who at the new moons make known what shall come upon you. So that's telling you about the wise men, how they so-called knew the times. So um, I also have Daniel 2.27. Daniel 2.27. And it says, Daniel answered the king and said, No wise men, enchanters, magicians, or astrologers can show to the king the mystery that the king has asked. And then 5.15 of Daniel as well. And all these cross-references are basically telling you about these so-called wise men. They weren't godly people. They really relied on magic and astrology and div div divination to um, tell the king what the king wanted to hear. But um, 5.15 of Daniel says, Now the wise men, the enchanters, have been brought in before me to read this writing and make known to me its interpretations, but they could not show the interpretation of the matter. So again, these cross-references are just telling you about these so-called wise men. So I'm just going to also put um, 2.27, 5.15. And then do a semicolon for Isaiah 47, 13. So the cross-references for um, verse 13 and 15 are Daniel chapter 2, verse 13, as well as verse 27. There's Daniel 5, 15, and then Isaiah 47 and 13. So for verse 16... I'm going to bracket that. I'm also going to bracket verse 17. Sorry, guys. I'm going to circle heard. Like I said, my notes, I have them written down, but they are not in the best... Um, order for organization and I'm going to circle the word contempt because it was a part of my notes that I wrote down but um, for verse 16 I'm going to write that um, I 
I'll just write those here. Whatever. I'm just gonna try to figure out what I write my notes. But for verse 16, because I bracketed that, I'm gonna write that the men immediately felt threatened by Vashi's actions toward the kings. And all right, I'm sorry guys. I'm trying not to get frustrated because this is like ridiculous with this these phones and just the live in general because it keeps shutting off or freezing or something like that. Hopefully it doesn't do it, but this is part three. <laughs> um, so we are on verse 16. So I'm going to pick up there. I just wanted to just put a post to let everyone know that I'm back on live. I don't know. This is just... I don't know what it is, but it just keeps shutting off, and I hope it's it's not going to shut off again. Because it's starting to get to me. <sighs> okay, so part three, because part two, for some reason, it still says live, and it's not even live. Like, I don't know what's going on, but... Part three, verse 16, um, I basically wrote... I am Tasha, I definitely am, but this is like ridiculous because this never happens. Like, <sighs> But for verse 16, I put that the men immediately feel threatened by Vashti's actions, which basically she disrespected the king by refusing him, um, and that Mamukin gives evil counsel in that sound counsel, and the cross-reference for that is Psalms 1 and 1, which reads, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seats of scoffers. Basically, the king is not blessed, um, meaning he's not in a manner, because he's sitting among people who give wicked counsel instead of those who give sound counsel, because the advice that Memukin is about to give the king is not smart advice. But, um, you know, it was a, there was a purpose in it, but it wasn't godly advice, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so I circled the word wrong because I looked it up, um, and the Hebrew word for wrong is awa, A-W-A-H, and I'm going to write that on the notes, um, but it means basically to act perversely or to sin, so with that in mind, where it says Vashti, um, not only against the queen has Vashti done wrong, it's basically saying not only against the the king did Vashti sin was she did she act perversely but she also did so against the people and the officials um, in all the provinces basically the men her response is basically considered to have been not just discourteous but also sub subversive sorry subversive so I'm just gonna write all that down quickly and show you guys what I wrote but I'm gonna come to my table real quick and write it because um, so this is verse 16 for the word wrong. Wrong is I weigh Awa and it's A W A H. Meaning to act perversely and my stomach is growling. Great. Or sin. Let me just show you guys as I write it. Um, so, for verse 16, wrong is awa, meaning to act perverse sin. Um, it means the queen insulted. And disrespected. Him as king. She was considered. Discourteous. Not just discourteous. Not just. This courteous but 
subversive. So that's for the word wrong. Um, moving on to verses 17 and 18. I'm going to bracket those as well, the whole 17 to 18, because it goes as one thought. Okay. I basically said that the men feel as if their wives would be influenced to disobey them if the queen disobeyed a command from the king. Um, the men fear that the women would become their own person, their own leaders. And this basically showed that the queen herself had a lot of influence on the women. So I'm going to write, men felt as if wives would be influenced. To disobey and become their own leaders this also lets me know that Queen Vashti had influence she had a lot of influence among the women so that is that so again for verse 17 and 18 it basically says for the queen's behavior will be known to the, all the women causing them to look at their husbands with contempt since they will say king ahasuerus commanded queen vashti to be brought before him and she did not come this very day the noble women of persia and media who have heard of the queen's behavior will say the same to all king's officials and there will be contempt and wrath and plenty so for that I basically said men felt as if wives would be influenced to disobey and become their own leaders Queen Vashti had influence so moving this aside for now and grabbing another post-it note I'm gonna go for the infamous owl because I love the owl um, now we're gonna go with the words um, heard and contempt we're gonna define those so the Hebrew word for heard is Shama so I'm gonna write heard sorry about the camera moving Hebrew word Shama meaning listen give heed to obey um, so that's letting me know that when it says in verse 17 this in verse 18 sorry it says this very day the noble woman of Persia and Media who have heard of the Queen's behavior will say the same meaning that they not only listen to what she did but they'll start to do exactly as she did and um, act upon what Queen Vashti did and then for the word contempt The Hebrew word is bizayon. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I will tell you guys how to spell it. So the Hebrew word is spelled um, B-I-Z-Z-A-Y-O-N. Bizayon, but um, it may be pronounced bizayon. I don't know. I'll definitely check that out. But um, it's the Hebrew word bizayon, which comes from the verb which comes from the verb sorry you guys I'm gonna have to keep checking the phone to make sure it's working smoothly baza meaning to despise through pride so basically not only would these women um, listen who have heard what the queen did to the king start to obey and follow and act upon what she did um, they'll also start to despise their husbands and be prideful in themselves so I'm gonna also write in a 
of the numbers 17 and 18 here. Women would act as Vashti did. And their feelings might echo the spirit of the queen's blatant refusal. So for verse 17 and 18, we have a lot. We have that the men immediately felt threatened by Vashti's actions toward the king and that Memukin gives evil counsel and not sound. And we cross-reference that to Psalms 1 and 1. Then we define the words heard and contempt in verse 18. So then going back to verse 17 and 18, it's now letting me know that... Um, women would act as Vashti did and their feelings might echo the spirit of the queen's blatant refusal and I'm sorry you guys I'm so wrong okay so this is why I need to go right now because when I don't everything gets jumbled so I'm going to use blue for this right here when I don't color code, everything starts to look the same to me, and I don't want that. We're just going to have to go with the blue Crayola for this one, because I'm getting confused <laughs> just looking at my own notes now without color coding. Not color coding, but using colors to denote which goes with which okay so yeah basically what I was saying was correct guys You guys, my brain is so wrong right now. Oh my gosh. No, it's completely wrong again. Okay. <sighs> Today is just not the day. <laughs> Thank you, Latoya. <laughs> so, um, this box here goes with verse 16. So, I was doing it correctly. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna do verse 16 with the Crayola. And then um, for herd and contempt, I'm going to do in this blue highlighter and come back here and match it with this. <laughs> Thank you, Latoya. <laughs> um, I'm going to go in now with the green highlighter and try to fix this hot mess here but um, I'm gonna bracket 17 and 18 with green instead of blue but you know what I'm okay because this actually is letting some of you guys see like sometimes you will make a mistake um, when you're trying to go in color code but it still works out in your favor anyway so it's okay <laughs> So that's verse 17 and 18. So I'm going to do 17 and 18 here as well in green. And also here in green. This is why I try to um, do my coloring at the same time as I study to keep everything making sense in my brain. Um, verse 13 and 15 will be in pink. Sorry about moving the camera. Purple will be for New the Times. 
I'm going to reread all the notes for each verse because. Okay. And then for wrong, I'm going to just do orange. Okay. So I'm going to quickly read my notes real quick <laughs> for you guys. So for verse 16. 16, I have that, um. I messed up again, you guys, didn't I? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Where's the Crayola? Oh my god, where's... Oh lord, you guys, I swear. <laughs> again, messed up when I had it right the first time. So this box is not supposed to be green. It's supposed to be blue. <laughs> okay. Hopefully when we do chapter 2, everything will go smoothly, but, okay. For verse 16, um, I have that the men immediately feel threatened by Vashti's actions toward the king, and Memu King gives evil counsel and not sound. I give the cross-reference of Psalms 1 and 1, and then I define the word wrong, which wrong is awa in Hebrew, meaning to act perversely or sin, which means that the queen insulted and disrespected Ahasuerus as king, and she was considered not just discourteous but sub subversive. Then for 17 and 18, I bracketed that, and I wrote that the men felt as if wives would be influenced to disobey and become their own leaders. This tells me that Queen Vashti had influence, and I also put that the woman would act as Vashti did, and their feelings might echo the spirit of the queen's blatant refusal. I circled the words heard in contempt, and I wrote that heard, the Hebrew word, is shama, meaning listen, give heed to, or to obey. And then for contempt, the Hebrew word is bizion, which comes from the verb baza, meaning to despise through pride. Now, again, when I give you guys the printable, the notes are in their correct order the way they should be. <laughs> so, pay my note taking no mind right now, but this is... The this is a real kind of like walkthrough of how I Bible journal. So, <laughs> um, moving on. We're almost done. We're almost done. We only have a few verses left. Um, so, verse 19. I'm going to underline that Vashti is never to come before King Ahasuerus. So, that Vashti is never again to come before King Ahasuerus. And to give her royal position to another who is better than she. So, for verse uh, 19, I'm going to write verse 19. This is telling me that the cost of Vash Vashti's disobedience is her position and livelihood as queen of Persia. So, cost of Vashti's disobedience is her position and livelihood as Queen of Persian Empire. As Queen of Persian Empire. And obviously you hear nothing again of Vashti after she is demoted from Queen. Um, no one knows if she had family to return to or if she had to go live among the poor or whatever. No one knows her circumstance after this. But I mean, after having been living this lavish lifestyle you can only imagine having it taken away from her so quickly because of one disobedient action um, compared to probably the many good things that she did that one act of disobedience cost her her position and livelihood as the queen of Persian Empire so but verse 20 so when the decree made by the king is proclaimed throughout all the kingdom for it is vast I'm gonna underline all women will give honor to, can you guys see this? Okay, all women will give honor to their husbands, high and low alike. 
Let me see if I can get my light to come closer. Um, so all women will give honor to their husbands high and low alike. I have a lot of cross references for that one. But um, for verse 20 here. The ba basically, the, the purpose of harsh treatment for um, that is being used on the queen is an example for the women of Persia is to remind them their roles as wives is to be submissive to their husbands. So I'm going to write purpose of harsh punishment is to use the queen herself because I mean a lot of people don't think queen could get in trouble but she just lost her livelihood and um, her position because of her disobedience so is to use the queen as an example remind wives Okay, remind wives of their roles. And the cross references I have for that are 1 Corinthians 7, 10, Ephesians 5 and 22, and Colossians 3 and 18, which I definitely will read through, but I'm just going to write down the cross references here. So, 1 Corinthians 7, 10. Ephesians 5.22 and Colossians 3.18 Before I read that, I am going to use my colors so that I can see everything, obviously. So for verse 20, I'm going to use the yellow. We're going to go with um, green. Nope. Can't go with green. We're going to go with this purple. We're going to go with purple. And like I said, the cross references are 1 Corinthians 7.10, so I'm going to flip to that and read that for you guys. 1 Corinthians 7.10 um, To the married I give this charge, not I but the Lord. The wife should not separate from her husband. Flipping to Ephesians 5 and 22. Five and twenty two reads, Wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, and then Colossians three eighteen. Reads, Wives submit to your husbands as fitting as is fitting in the Lord. So I'm going to reread that again. Colossians 3.18 says, Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. So, um, again, for verse 20, it's basically letting me know that the purpose of this harsh punishment, the purpose of saying that Vashti has to now um, no longer become queen, is basically an ex for her to be used as an example to the wives in Persia to respect their husbands. Thank you, Latoya. And Alicia, I got it from um, Walmart. They have this one, they have our ones, and then they have a bunch of emoji um, post-it notes as well. I think this was like a dollar and some change, and then the emoji ones are like 77 cents. Definitely check Walmart. Um, that's where I found it at. And I'm probably going to go buy more.
because they're just so freaking cute. They're adorable. <laughs> but, um, okay. And the final verse I'm going to focus on is, um, verse 22. Finally at the end, guys, after, you know, breaking this up into three parts. <laughs> um, verse 22, I'm going to underline that every man be master in his own household. And then I'm also going to underline in its own script to every people its own language. Um, so those are two separate thoughts. So verse 22 has um, two different parts to the thought. So for the first part, I'm going to focus on um, where it says in its own script into every people in its own language. Um, the Persian Empire had many languages such as Old Persian, Babylonian dialect, Aramaic, Assyrian, Arabic, Indo-European, and Elamite, I believe. So um, if you guys don't know how to spell any of those, it is in the, the um, notes, so don't worry. I definitely put that in the notes. But um, this tells me that the Persian Empire Okay, guys, so I'm, like, really irritated now. And the first portion of the live, for some reason, didn't even save. So it's only showing parts two, three, and now four. So I have to figure something out because this is just not going as it should go. And I know a lot of you guys who either are watching the replays or watching now are new. So I apologize. The studies are never like this. I don't know what is going on today. The enemy must really be frustrated with me because I'm doing this again. But um, I don't know. We were literally on the last verse. Like the last verse and it cut off. And I can now not find part one of the study. I see part two, part three part four which I'm doing now but I do not see part one so I'm gonna have to figure something out um, I'm probably just gonna have to do a video just talking it through because this is just not working today um, yeah I, I can't find that video at all and I'm literally scrolling through looking and I don't know I don't know. Um, yeah, Kristen, like this never has happened before with it just shutting off. And um, I know the enemy has been upset with me lately because I was told some things in church. And I'm starting to get back into my gifts that God gave me. So I know the enemy is a little pissed. But this is ridiculous. Like, I really cannot find the first part. So, um, I'm going to finish up this last verse. Obviously, I'm going to finish it up. I'm going to post the notes up for you guys to have it. So you guys can just read through the notes. And if I cannot find part one of this study... In the video section, I will do a separate video either later on tonight or tomorrow. Um, I'll pre-record a video and just do sort of a talking video because I don't know what else to do. Like, <laughs> I I don't know what else to do. And as much as I want to be upset, I'm not going to be upset. I'm just a little irritated right now. Yeah, I know... Um, Alicia, I definitely do want to post it to YouTube, but the thing is, the videos, um, once they get saved to the Facebook group, I then download them from Facebook and then upload them, kind of like how I'm going to do the Ruth study, because I'll be uploading Ruth, um, the study we did, to the YouTube channel this week, probably over the weekend, but I can't find part one, like, it's ridiculous, I don't, I don't know what's going on, like, ugh. Thank you guys. Thanks, Latoya and Kristen. 
I'm 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 good. It's just I need to find part one. <laughs> Yeah, Alicia. So I like I can upload parts two, three, and four, but there's no part one. Like the video did not save for some reason, and I didn't know it didn't save. So I'm probably just gonna have to do a separate video talking through what I did. Um, but I'll work it out somehow, some way, so everyone can see all of the verses for this study because I don't know. And I think something happened with Anne as well because I got a mess. I got a few messages from her, so I need to check that out. Ugh, I don't know, but I'm gonna finish this up. Yes, Lorraine, he definitely is busy. He is upset. He's busy. Really, Ari? Yeah, I'm just gonna um. Yeah, once this is over, because I have to pick my son up actually in a, like an hour <laughs> from school, so. Tomorrow I'm going to work on a, um, a talking based video. Um, it's not going to be a live, but I'll do a pre-recorded video for you guys. Because I know Anne is going to be doing the verse mapping tomorrow on verse um, verse 11. But um, thank you, Kim. It's, it's alright. I mean, technology, the enemy, it is what it is. But I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep these videos going, obviously. But um, we're just going to finish up the final verse and um, I'll post up the questions and the actual notes. You guys will have the notes, but I'm still going to make that video. But um, let's just jump back into verse 22 and I'll find the other video if I can later. <laughs> but um, okay, so verse 22, like I said, I underlined um, in its own script to every people in its own language. So basically that's telling me that the Persian Empire had many different languages. So I put Persian Empire had many languages. Languages. Um, and it was Old Persian. Babylonian dialect. Aramaic, Assyrian, Arabic, Indo-European, <laughs> they had a lot of different languages, and uh, Elamite, I think that's how you say that, but um, Elamite, and then the last note for verse 22 which goes to that every man be master in his own household um this is basically reinforcing that men were the leaders of the house and that women should obey them basically what that's saying um to reinforce i hope you don't hear that stomping um my landlord has kids upstairs so they're upstairs stomping <laughs> to reinforce that Men were the leaders of the house that women should obey. And I have um, a cross reference to Genesis. 316 for that, um, which I'm going to flip to and read. Um, it says, to the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing, and in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to you, your husband. I'm sorry. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, or it says your desire shall be toward your husband, but he shall rule over you. 
So um, the Bible itself says that the husband shall rule over the wife. So that's basically what I got from verse 22. I'm going to go in with orange and pink. So the first portion will be pink and then the second portion will be orange. So in its own script and to every people in its own language is in pink. And then that every man be master in his own household in orange. So that is it for the verse by verse notes. But I'm trying to put all my pencils up. <laughs> so we see from just chapter one alone, we're introduced to um, King Ahasuerus, who is King Xerxes. And we're introduced to Queen Vashti, who now has lost her position due to her disobedience. And um, though a lot of people tend to focus on King Ahasuerus and Queen Vashti, the whole book of Esther, though it does not include the name of God or any reference to God, is all about God. So this is just God setting up for Esther to come in and take position. Because if Queen Vashti was still in position... Esther wouldn't be able to do her job, which is saving the Jews. So this is basically chapter one is setting everything up to understand um, who King Ahasuerus is, kind of his personality, because what I'm getting from his personality is that he's this prideful man. He likes sexy women and um, that he hangs around a bunch of foolish men who give foolish advice to him that he takes, which then leads him down the wrong path, of course. But um Chapter 1 is really just setting up for Esther to come in and be crowned queen, which is why I called this um, study a queen dethroned, because Vashti has to be dethroned in order for God's plan to go through. But um, that is pretty much... No, Latoya, God was never mentioned in this book or in the book of Ruth, and these are the only two female-named books. Um, in the Bible, but neither Esther or Ruth was God mentioned, though there are um, kind of references in a sense of spirituality in Ruth, but in Esther, there's really none except for the, the talk of fasting and praying, pretty much it. But other than that, the name of God is never mentioned in, in no fa form of fashion. But um, yeah, chapter one is just God setting it up for Esther to be able to come in to become queen. So that's pretty much it for chapter one. Um, here I'm gonna post, put all my post-it notes on it now. I'm gonna stick this one here. I got a unicorn. Gotta stick the unicorn here. <laughs> and then we have this huge post-it note which I'm going to have to stick. there so um these are all the notes that we that i have written down that i shared with you guys all these notes will be in the printable of course um again i'm going to end this video and try to yeah it's the um they call it the unicorn emoji it's at walmart it came they're like a bunch of different emoji ones so definitely check out your local walmart and like the stationery section where they have the post-its and um index cards that's where these are but um, I'm going to, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm going to post an image where we can all just discuss um, chapter one of Esther and where we can all post questions and comments and stuff like that. Because I know it's kind of hard to do that on the live, especially now that this live was split up into more videos. So I'm going to post an image um, where it's just going to say, let's discuss chapter one of Esther. Yeah, Latoya, Walmart. Um, me too, Ari. I, I can't wait for next week. Hopefully next week runs smoothly. But I am going to now in this post up the questions. I'm going to post up the live notes. I'm going to try to have the live notes up by 7 p.m. tonight. I'm going to edit some stuff and add some stuff. Um, and then I'm going to 
try to find part one and if I can't find part one I will just um, record a video where I'm just talking through um, doing a talk through a verse by verse breakdowns for you guys um, but yeah that's pretty much it and I will see you guys next week at the same time next week obviously it will start at 10 a.m. I will be on at 9 45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time just playing some music and then at 10 05 a.m. I'll pray us in that's all Eastern Standard Time um but I'm thinking about it anything else I think that's it um I know Anne will be posting some in-depth study notes for you guys so there'll be two files for notes for today um, it'll be my verse by verse study notes and then Anne will be doing the in-depth. Definitely check out the um, word study that Anne did on the word beauty. That'll all be included in the notes. And tomorrow she'll be posting a verse mapping video on verse 111. So it's Esther chapter 1 verse 11. She'll be doing a verse mapping on I believe tomorrow. But um, that's pretty much it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and just pray that be everything goes smooth for the next 10 weeks <laughs> so i'll see you guys later bye